Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our series on regular expression. Today, we're going to be taking a look at meta characters. These meta characters are special characters just within regular expression that'll change how you actually specify what pattern you're looking for. What we have right in front of you is how you can use regular expression to match for an email. This may actually look really complex. And to be fair, it kind of is. There's some unnecessary stuff in here that we'll actually take out because you don't really need it. But to me, this looked very overwhelming when I first was learning about regular expression. But now that I've learned what regular expression is and how to use it, this isn't that tough. And a lot of these special characters that you're seeing, things like brackets or squiggly brackets, periods, dashes, plus signs, all of these things are meta characters and they all do specific things. So in this lesson, we're going to walk through those meta characters. I'm going to explain how to use them. So let's come right down here. Let's import our module. So we'll say import regular expression. And now we're going to be using a lot of different strings and quotes throughout this lesson because there's a lot of different use cases for these. So I'm going to kind of cater how I'm showing you these to each quote. So let's start with our very first one. Just call this one string. You can call it quote or really whatever you'd like to call it. And I'm going to say I like the mountains in the spring, which is very true. Um, and we're going to come right down below. What we're going to do is re dot find all. We're going to use find all for all of these. Now you can use the different ones, but find all is just going to be the simplest to demonstrate all of the meta characters, in my opinion. So what we need to do is have a parentheses and we can go ahead and do comma string. Now we need to specify our pattern. The first pattern that we're going to look at right here is the brackets. Now these brackets are going to allow you to look at a range, which is very unique. Because if we did something like, let's take out the brackets, A dash M, and we run it, we're going to get nothing in our output because it's looking for a literal string that looks like A dash M. But when we put the brackets around it, so now we're looking for the characters A, B, C, all the way through M. And if we run this, it gives us this list with all these lowercase characters A through M. So you'll notice there's no capital I at the beginning here. There's also no T. So if you say L I K E and then the does not have the T that's because that's outside of this range a through M. Now, if we wanted to get the capital letters as well, like capital I, we can do that. And I'm actually going to put an A through a Z and we can also do a dash Z, which is uppercase. So let's run this and this one's much longer. So it's doing it like this, but it says I like the mountains in the spring. It spells it out the entire way. Now, what if I just put in here some random numbers? I'm going to go ahead and run this. If we scroll down, we don't have that. So we're only right now looking for letters, but we could also say 0 9. And now if we run this, if we go to the bottom, you'll notice we have those numbers. I'll demonstrate this just one more time down here using the brackets. We'll have a different string on this one. So we'll say string is equal to uh, I have 123,456 koalas uh, with an exclamation point. And we're just going to say re.findall. And now we're looking for a bracket of just the numbers. So now we're just going to say bracket 0 4. So we're only looking at 0 through 4. And of course, we want to look at the string. So now if we run this, we're not getting any of these characters that are text. We're only getting the numeric 0 through 4. We also don't get five and six because that's outside of the range that we've specified. So that is brackets. That's how we look for ranges. Let's go on to our next one. And the next one that we're going to look at is the period. Now the period is going to match any single character except for a new line, which is backslash n. That is the only one it's not going to look at. But we can say let's go our new string. We'll say string. Um, you can see seashells by the seashore. Kind of like that old, uh, you know, Sally by the seashore or sells seashell. I don't, can't even remember. Um, but it's kind of like that one. And what we're going to do is just copy this one. We don't need to write it out every single time. Uh, but now we're going to look at a period. Now, if we just say a period like this and we run this, uh, we're going to get every single character. That's exactly what it does. We're going to take every single character in here, even the spaces or periods. If we have them, we can put one in here or even the period at the very end. So we're taking every single character. Typically, that's not how I would use it. There have been some use cases where I've done that. But more often than not, I'll do something like uh, s dot a. 
I'm looking for something that starts with S, has one character in the middle and ends in A. Now this is not a real use case. Of course, I'm, I've never done this in my job, but if I search for this, now it's only gonna return patterns that match that exact thing. So it starts with S, then it has a character, doesn't matter what it is. So if I say uh, SBA over here, if I run this, it's looking and it matches that pattern. The next one that I'm gonna look at, and we're just gonna copy this because I'm gonna reuse it, is we can use squiggly brackets. Now what squiggly brackets does is it specifies the exact number of occurrences of the preceding character or group. So right here we have the period character. If I do a squiggly brackets, I can specify that we need one. And this should give us the exact same output because right here we're specifying one, but down here we could specify one as well. So let's run this. And as you can see, it's the exact same output. Now here I can specify two or three or four or five, six. It really doesn't matter. I could do the exact same thing up here though. I could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way up to as many as I would like, but it gets kind of messy. That's where these squiggly brackets really shine is when you have um, a higher number. If you're doing one, two, three, and you want to specify, here's how many values I'm looking for of this group or this character that I'm using before it. I'll give you one more example of using those brackets and it's gonna be pretty similar, but it'll just be a different string kind of. I will say string is equal to, well, well, well. If it isn't, I need to use double quotes here. Don't mind me. Uh, if it isn't Will Wilmer, then we're gonna come up here. We'll just copy this because it's very similar. And what we want to do is we're gonna say it starts with a capital W, it ends with an L, and we want two characters in between it. So right here. Now, if we didn't specify the two, we might be able to get this W, I, L right here. Let's go ahead and run this really quickly. So all we pick up is this first well, because again, we're looking at capital W, and then we're also getting will right here. So we're getting well and will. And we didn't pick up this one right here because it has two characters, then the last one has a four. So the I and the L are these two characters right here, and then it needs to end with an L, which it doesn't. These wells over here only have a lowercase w. So we're looking for a capital W, so we don't pick up those either. Now let's go to the next meta character. And the next one we're gonna look at, I'm gonna kind of use these at the same time. We wanna look at the beginning and the end. So we're matching the beginning and the end. So we have the dollar sign and we have a caret. Now this looks like an upper arrow, but it's called a caret. The dollar sign represents the end of a string, whereas the character represents the beginning of the string. So we're gonna come right down here. We're gonna say string is equal to, and we're gonna say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alex. Uh, happy birthday to you. Said that very sad, uh, but I couldn't sing it in my head. Uh, or I couldn't sing it when I was singing it out loud. So let's do re, and I mean, I don't wanna, I don't wanna keep writing this. Uh, let's go right here, there we go. So now we have our string and now we're gonna use both the dollar sign and the caret. Now for the caret, we're gonna have our quotes and what we need to specify is the caret and then happy. That's what we're searching for at the very beginning. Let's go ahead and run this. And of course we get a nice output of happy, but what would happen if I put it at the end right here? I have happy and then caret. If I run this, I'm not gonna get an output. So for this one, it definitely matters that you have it on the left-hand side of whatever you're searching for. And it's only going to search for the very first in your string. It's not gonna search at each sentence, even though I have a uh, happy multiple times here. So if I search for something else like the letter uh, or the word U, which comes right over here, if I search for this, it's not gonna find anything because this does not come at the very beginning of the string. Now I'm just gonna copy this and instead of doing the caret, we're gonna use a dollar sign. Now the dollar sign is gonna come at the very end. So now we're looking at U period. So if I replace this with a dollar sign, right? Where is that? There we go. If I do U dot, let's run this and see what happens. It's not gonna work. 
Just like the carrot, you have to have it on the correct side. With the carrot, it was on the left because it's the beginning of the string. And then with the dollar sign, because it's at the end of the string, we need it on the right hand side. I'm going to come right over here to bring it and I'm going to do the dollar sign. And if I run it, you'll see that we do in fact get a match. So that's the carrot and the dollar sign. Very simple, but honestly used quite a bit. So those are good ones to know how to use. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our next three. Now these three are quite similar, but there are distinct differences between all of them. We have the star. We also have the plus sign, and then we have a question mark. Now all of these are for matching specific occurrences of a value. So if we look at this star, that's going to represent zero or more occurrences. So I'll even put it like this just so we you know, can visually see it while we're working through these. But I'll do this. I'll do this. So this is zero or more. The plus sign is one or more. So this one can have zero, but the plus sign has to at least have one. And then this one, the dollar sign is zero or one. So again, very, very, very similar, but they all have their own way of handling their occurrences. The star is zero or more, plus is one or more, and the question mark is, I wrote Zor, but zero or one. So let's see how these actually work. Create our string, and this one's gonna be interesting. It says this thing called a thimble has thrice hurt me. I know it's a common occurrence. That's a common phrase in my household. Uh, and then we'll copy this. We're gonna bring it right down here. So now we have our string, and now we're gonna specify our pattern. Let's start with the star, which means zero or more. So let's say we're looking at THI, and let's do it like this, because that's a pretty common in this string. And then we're gonna do a period, and what we're looking for when we use this star it's going to affect the preceding value. So again, it's affecting this, which says now we're looking for a character that has zero or more. So let's go ahead and run this. Now this output might look kind of strange. It's literally the entire output. Why is this happening? Well, because we're looking for THI, which we get at the very beginning of our string, but then we're looking for zero or as many as we possibly can get in this string. And if we look at this, it goes from S and it just keeps going. These are all characters. This is the more part of the zero or more. And we go all the way until the end of the string. Now, what if we went all the way to an S, which is this. So zero or more, we might just get this or we might not. Let's take a look at it and see what happened. So now we get a different output. It goes from this thing called a thimble has. Now, why did it stop at has and not this? What we're actually looking for is THI, so we found it. Then what we're looking for is all the characters until the very last S. So if there wasn't this S over here, it would have stopped. And let's actually get rid of that really quickly. Let's just get rid of that S, let's run this. And now it's just gonna pick up this, right? That makes perfect sense, but now we have this other S. So now it's searching all the way until it finds the last S. And when we run this, it goes till that last S right there. It's also worth noting that with this, we also have the zero. That's why when we get rid of this S and we're looking at just this, it's able to capture it. It's doing that even though we have zero characters in between the THI and the S. That's because it says zero or more. Let's take this exact same string really quickly. And all we're going to do is change it to a plus. If we change this to a plus, now it has to at least have one or more. So now if we run this, you'll notice we don't get an output. That's because we have to at least have one character between THI and the S, and we don't have that. So now let's use the same one, except now we're going to use the question mark. Now remember, the question mark is zero or one. We can't have two. We can't have three, we can't have four, it has to only have zero or one. So if we change this to a question mark, now we're only looking for one or zero characters, this period, one or zero. So now if we run this, we do get this as an output, much like when we did the star. It was able to get zero, and we were able to get this as our output as well. Now what if I change this and we go all the way back, 
I change this to an E. Go ahead and run this. Now again, it's gonna take THI and go all the way until the final E. We get the entire output. But what if we look at right here and we go, we change this one to an E. Again, we're gonna get the entire output because we're looking for one character or more. And again, we have a lot more go all the way to the final E. And what's gonna happen if we change this to an E? What it's gonna look for is it's gonna look for the THI and then one or zero occurrences before an E. Now the only one that kind of fits into this is thimble. Thrice starts with THR, so that one really doesn't work. But we have THI, let's go ahead and run this. Now what we could do if we really wanted to get thimbles, we could come over here and use those squiggly brackets that we were looking at. Now we're looking at THI, period, and then we're looking at three of those. So we're looking at three periods, and the question mark is just gonna say we at least have to have zero or one of those three periods. So let's go ahead and run this, and now we do get the output of thimble. Now let's go down, and we're gonna take a look at our next one. Let's create our string first, and we'll say I hate that I love balloon, I spell balloon, balloon animals. They are beautiful. Uh, and this is one of my own personal confessions, if I'm being honest, like that. And what we're gonna do is we'll come right down here. We'll copy this. And the next one that we're gonna take a look at is this bar right here. Now this is above my enter key on my keyboard on my laptop. It looks just like this. It's just an up and down bar. What this is gonna say is either or. So if you find this pattern, or this pattern, I want it returned. I wanna look for multiple patterns at the same time. Like if I looked for hate and beautiful. Hate is over here, beautiful is over here. And if I run this, I get both of them. But what if I say uh, love, and love's actually in there. Let's do uh, lovely. Lovely is not in this string. If I do lovely and beautiful, it doesn't return lovely, it's not in this string, but beautiful was in there, so either or, as long as one is in there, we will get the output appropriately. Now the very last thing that we're gonna look at in this lesson is the backslash. Let's go ahead and create our string. It's gonna be really simple. I like cats, you like cats, we all like cats. Now, when we were working with the periods before, it stands for any character. So if you did read.findall, I don't know why I'm typing this out. And then we did a period, then we did a string right here. When we ran that, it took every single character. It even took the periods. But what if we actually really just wanted to search for the periods? Well, kind of like we talked about in the last lesson, we can use something called a backslash. And when we do that, it's gonna specify that this no longer is a special character. This is actually called an escape sequence. An escape sequence is gonna take the character that comes after the backslash as a literal character. It's no longer going to be a meta character or interpreted as a meta character when using regular expression. Now, it's just looked at as a regular period. So now we can search for an actual period when we're using this, much like if we were searching for a question mark. If we had a question mark here and we tried to look for a question mark, if we run this, we're gonna get an error because it's actually looking for a zero or one occurrence of a specific pattern. But we do a backslash question mark. Now we're looking for this actual literal character of this question mark right here. That does come into play quite a bit. Uh, if we go back and look at the example up here, you'll see several of these backslashes because what's happening is, is we're looking for specific things. We're looking for specific values like right here. We are looking for a period in an actual email address like gmail.com. And so now that we know what a lot of these things actually do, this makes a lot more sense. We're looking for a specific pattern and we're saying plus the at sign, then a specific pattern dot, and then we have a few letters that we're looking for and we're limiting it to two and four. So there are still things in here that we haven't learned that we're gonna look at in the next lesson when we look at character classes like this backslash W. These are quite helpful when we're looking for these patterns as well. So we'll take a look at that in the next lesson. So this has been our lesson on regex meta characters. Like I just said, we're gonna be taking a look at character classes in the next lesson. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I will see you in the next video.